Hey, Troy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, you know, I was looking at some of your older YouTube videos just in preparation for, for this, for this interview. Okay. And I realized like you're an OG influencer, YouTuber. Like you've yeah. been at this for so long that, I mean, do you look back at that time fondly? Do you look back and say, wow, I really accomplished a lot when I was, when I was doing YouTube? I mean, I look back on it, it's sort of like, um, like watching home videos from when you were a kid. You know, it's like, you, you remember it, but it's like kind of vague and, and it feels like a different person, but it also feels like you. And it was such a fun time. Like w when I was doing it, it was, you know, that was like, I think maybe the second wave of like YouTubers, you know, there was like the first wave where it was like Fred and uh, right. like Charlie bit my finger and all of that. And then there was like, us and we we sort of caught this wave a whole bunch of us um and it was so fun because we were all really 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 tight at the time and like we got to travel and you know like the idea of a like something like vidcon or it was all just so new and so yes. exciting and so um yeah it was like that kind of feels like it was my like high school experience or something you know yeah do you miss the fact that you, you didn't really go to high school or, or traditional school? Do you wish that you did? Or are you happy that, you know what, you missed out on, you didn't really miss out on much? <laughs> well, I mean, I went till I went to a normal school till year nine, which I, I'm, I think it was like 14 when I stopped. So I felt like I had kind of had the experience. And then also because I, I started homeschooling, it wasn't like I was making a ton of new friends. So I actually stayed friends with all of my school friends. Like I... Yeah. I was still going to all the house parties and all of the stuff outside. I still went to like the, the ball, like our prom. Um, one of the girls from the school invited me to go. So like, I, I kind of feel like I had all of the fun experiences um, and like none of the annoying parts. So I was, right. I was happy. You got very lucky with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was watching uh, your vlog uh, about your time in New York City at the BMAs, at the Met Gala. Mm -hmm. um, first, how was it being back on stage performing? crazy I, I feel like I have been like since I got back to America it's been like just pure adrenaline for the last like month you know it, like it was such an overstimulation of my brain because I think I'd gotten used to you know being alone in Australia like you know, at my house riding my bike every day and like it was just such a slow pace which I really 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 fell in love with and loved and I can't wait to go back but then it was really cool as well to like get back and be like oh wait this like previous life of mine pre-covid yeah. it wasn't like a dream it wasn't some sort of like fantasy that I made up but, like this is actually happening and um yeah I kind of just like jumped right back in and in a you know suddenly I was like at the Met and it was it was really crazy you know I was like FaceTiming my parents afterwards and um yeah just it felt it felt crazy it was cool yeah it almost seemed like you you almost picked back up right where you left off before mm -hmm. the pandemic I mean you've had quite the year with your song with Casey Musgraves, the song with Regard and, and, and Tate McRae, which we'll talk about the music side of your year um, in a minute. But um, tell me, is there any behind the scenes stuff at the Met Gala that we the people don't see? I mean, I know your phones are taken away. And then we see this picture of you, you know, in front in the stall. And then we find out that Rihanna told you to take that picture. Is that true? <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the cool thing about the Met, I think, like, the coolest thing about the Met is that um, no one's allowed to bring plus ones. Ah. So everyone, you know, you speak to all of these people who you're, like, terrified of because right. they're, you know, you've no watched them your whole life or you know who they are or whatever. And everyone's in the same boat of, like, who do you know here? Like, do you have any friends? You know, like, can we hang out? <laughs> right. Um, and so it's really nice. It's sort of like this equalizer where in you know for those few hours everyone is just down to like hang out and be you know it feels like a really safe place to kind of like let loose and have fun and make friends and um as for that picture <laughs> i i was going to the bathroom um i bumped into tom daly on the way the diver him? Uh, yeah we we had met like a couple of days before and i was like i'm gonna go pee and he was like okay i need to pee too so we walk to the boys bathroom and for some reason, Rihanna is holding the door open for us. So I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And then I said to her, I was like, oh, I just walked in the Fenty show. Thank you so much for having me. And she was like, I know all the stuff. We were talking about that for a bit. Um, and then it was my first time wearing a dress. So I said to her, I was like, how do I pee in this? Like, right. advice. 
And she was like, just hike it up. So I was like, okay. So I walked up to the urinal and I pulled it up and she goes to Tom, take a picture, take a picture. So Tom Daly gets this photo of me peeing at the, at the urinal. And um, I'm happy because I feel like that's one of those moments where I feel like I would have been like, is that really like what happened or is my memory, you know, right. like deceiving right. me? But there is photographic evidence of, <laughs> of the moment, which is nice. I think the craziest part of that is that Rihanna was holding the door open. Like, yeah, why? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she was doing in there. I, it was cool. Like, it was like her, ASAP, Timothy Chalamet. Like, they were, everyone, was, the boys' bathroom was like, it was, it was going off for some reason. Wow. Who was at your table at the Met Gala? Um, I was seated with Billie Eilish and Phineas and um, Dan Levy and Maisie Williams. Um, it was a really fun table. Some people from Vogue. It was it was cool. That sounds like a, a pretty amazing table. <laughs> right. we, were, we were having a good time. And the Vogue guy, Michael, he was like, um, tequila shots for the table, please. And we were oh. like, you know, we were going for nice. it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, you made quite the statement with the dress that you wore and, you know, it was talked about all over social media. Were you uncomfortable with the reaction to it, to, to how people were perceiving you wearing a dress? Not really. You know, it was weird. It was like, I think before I, you know, what I had seen the sketches and stuff like that. And, and I, I knew that I was excited about it. And I kind of thought I was going to feel, um, a little out of my comfort zone. Cause I, I'd, I'd never worn a dress like in public before. Um, and it was strange, you know, I, I put it on and I felt it didn't feel like I was like playing a character or like doing drag or, you know, it gave me no sort of like, um, yeah, no feeling of being out of my body at all. I felt really, really present. I felt really like myself and I felt, I felt really cool. It was, it was, it was it's, I, I learned a lot. It's like not the last time you're going to see me in a dress, you know, I think it just like further confirmed something that I already knew, which was like, to me, clothing is, is not gendered and like, um, yeah, like just have fun with it. Like why, why, why put so much, you know, emphasis on it? Um, it was cool. And you, first of all, you look great in, in the dress, but I mean, the fact that people were talking about it is enough to be like, maybe I am doing something right, you know? Right. Well, I, I mean, I think it's just like, like anyone can wear a dress and I, I highly implore everyone to, cause I felt I felt cool. And yeah. not only did I feel cool, but like, I felt um, something that I didn't expect was I felt, I felt um, like hot, you know what I mean? Ah. Like, I felt like it was, um, it was just a cool moment where I was like, I don't know. I was wearing these like really high platform shoes. Yeah. And I was like, I had this little tiny handbag and it, I just felt like powerful, you know, wow. it, was, it was nice. Did you get any numbers after the Met Gala? <laughs> The only number that I got, no, not the only one, but um, <laughs> uh, one of the waiters at the Met. Yeah, wow. we, it was funny. Um, he was he was really nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. You you mentioned the uh, the uh, Savage Fenty uh, fashion show that you walked in. Is it nerve wracking to to be on display like that? I mean, I would be out of my mind. I, I don't know if I can do something like that, but. For you, you, you've modeled before, um, but you've also expressed, you know, having, um, you know, some body issues and, and, and hmm. body image issues. But how was that walking on, walking in that? I mean, I think that show specifically, like above, above any other fashion show or um, fashion moment, it's like, I was looking around and seeing all of these people that looked so, so, so good. Like everyone was feeling themselves. You know, I could tell that everyone felt hot that day. Yeah. And um, there was all body types and all um, genders. And it, it just like was such a diverse group of people and everyone looked hot and everyone looked cool. And so it really like, it gives you permission to, in, to like love yourself for that second and be like, no, you know what? Like, this is me and this is, this is, um, like everyone deserves to feel that kind of, you know, that like sex appeal, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, in that moment, I actually felt, I felt like confident, which was nice. Wow. Now does Rihanna reach out to you directly or her people says, Hey, we want you to be a part of this. Who calls you? Well, so that's the thing. So it was like, it was definitely 
her people and in the thing they were like oh rihanna has requested and i'm like yeah right <laughs> right i'm like some casting director was like oh we need like a gay person let's get troy and um but then when i when i saw her at the met and we spoke about the show i i actually did get a sense that like i i believed it a little bit like i feel wow. like she, she's so involved in that show that show is so her vision and so her um that it it felt genuine so i don't know yeah i'm not sure it's possible <laughs> when people throw out the the term uh gay icon right and sometimes they 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 call you an icon i mean you've been around with your youtube days with your acting career with your music do you feel like you're an icon no okay um <laughs> no i i think you know like i um i don't know i mean like i yeah, I, there's so many people that I would that I would say truly are icons before um, before myself. So yeah, no. Um, but it's I mean it's of course flattering and nice and everything like that. But um, it's it's not reality. It's not 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 true. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a a very busy year with music. Um, earlier this year, you released a song with Casey Musgraves and Mark Ronson produced it. Um, mm -hmm. Also one of my favorite songs of the year with regard and choice of on you um mm. these releases and the music that you've been releasing and we'll talk about angel baby has that been has it been good getting out all of that um that creative energy that you weren't able to get out during this pandemic and during the quarantine yeah so my ep i wrote right before covid um and so we just kind of put it out during covid and i gotta be honest that was kind of a strange experience because like normally when you're releasing there's all of these really like tactile ways, you know, triggers that make you realize that, you, that you're releasing music. You know, you play a show and like right. you, um, I don't know, the, the, there's just like real life. You can feel the music in real life basically. Whereas like releasing the EP, I just sort of was like posting tweets and putting up Instagrams and then it was like out in the world, you know? And so only a couple of weeks ago when I played in New York for the first time, did I realize like, okay, wow, like, you know, I put out some music since the last yeah. time I did this and, and it was really fun to kind of sing those songs live for the first time. But um, as for the collaborations, like, yeah, that was me trying to basically like stay creative and stay inspired in a way that, in the best way that I could, you know, I, I had a really hard time writing music over the pandemic. And so, you know, getting these songs that had already kind of started without me um and then being able to kind of like put my spin on it that felt like the kind of the best way for me to remain creative and remain like um you know keep singing basically yeah um with the you know restrictions that i that i had at the time how was it working with casey oh my god i love her so much <laughs> everybody uh, yeah i hear that a lot People love her. I, I don't know. Great. People know that she's funny. Oh. She's really, really, really funny. And um, she's just so nice. And like, I mean, it goes without saying how talented she is. And, um, you know, I think that that song was like a, a really healing song for both of us. Um, you know, we were both kind of going through a lot at the time. And, um, and so it was nice to kind of come together. And then also we filmed the music video, which was so fun because it was like, I feel like, Casey really trusted myself and Badia, the director. And we kind of like, we just had a really fun day. And then it was really nice because her and Badia went on to make, uh, um, I think all of the music videos for this album that she's done, she's done with Badia. Nice. So it was like, um, it was cool. I think it was just like a nice moment where we all just had a really great time working together. Did you give her any advice on her SNL performance on how to, because you did S SNL. Did you give her any? Surely she's done SNL before. I okay. don't know. I, th I think she has. I I'm sure she has. But no, I would, I would never. I, I don't think I'd give Casey advice for anything. She's like, <laughs> I, I'm going to take advice from her. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the song Angel Baby. Um, what a beautiful record. And when I heard it, I thought this, I, I, I felt like I pictured a scene in an 80s movie with right. two people dancing. The spotlight is on them. When you were writing that song, is that what you were envisioning? Well, so this it kind is of works. Way. Yeah, no, totally. I feel that. Um, I I think this is another way of like trying to stay creative with the you know within the confines of COVID. Um, that chorus already existed. My friends wrote it, Sarah and Jay Hart and Jason, um, and so they sent it to me 
And I was like, wait, this chorus, I feel like it has existed for all of time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it just felt like one of those things where it's like, this is nostalgic and it's like, you can sit by the end of the first listen of the song, you can sing along. Cause it's like, you know, it just, it, for some reason, it's one of those choruses that feels like it's always existed. Um, and so then for me, it was like, the question is, okay, is there a way where I can around it through the verses? And I, I wrote the bridge as well. How can I tell the story that I want to tell around this chorus? And so um, I was kind of unsure if I could pull it off, but, um, but once I wrote the verses in the chorus, it felt like me and it felt like it told the story that I wanted to tell. And it felt kind of just like a, a fantasy, you know? And so, um, yeah, now we put it out. Was it a fantasy uh, that you you drew from personal experience or the experience of others? Um, it's a it's a full fledged fantasy. Like it, it definitely hasn't um, happened. You know, I think it's one of those things where it's like the, the the verses set up this thing of, you know, I'm like I was on the brink of giving up on mm. finding love, and then this is where the fantasy kicks in, where it's like out of the blue on a rainy night someone just like appears and and yeah. like sweeps you off your feet you know and like, <laughs> um it's that it's that fantasy and so um yeah I'll let you know once it happens okay okay you wrote a song yes or you tweeted about writing a song yesterday that you that you liked a lot mm. um is it a song an upbeat song a song that's going to make us cry be in our feels give give me some insight <laughs> also it's weird because I didn't it, it's definitely not a happy song it's okay <laughs> um no, and I was fine when I was writing it. I wrote it quite quickly and, um, you know, it, it, it felt really good to, to write it. Um, and then I came home, went to bed and I started playing it yesterday morning mm. and listening to it just to kind of see if I wanted to make any changes. And then for some reason, the waterworks started and I was like, <laughs> oh, damn, like, I really, really like this song. Like, I yeah. really, because it's one thing, you know, I think it's like if you, um, I think a lot of the time songwriting is about trying to say something, right? Like you're trying to communicate what you're trying to say. But more than that, I think where like the magic is, is the combination of like the production, the melody and the lyrics. When those three things all simultaneously are all communicating a feeling that you couldn't just say in the lyrics or you couldn't just say in the melody or you couldn't just say in the production, when they all kind of like work together and they're all pushing this feeling, that's when I, as a fan of music, I'm listening and I'm like, this makes me feel something, you know, it's like, it's more than just like listening to the lyrics and understanding what the person is telling me. Right. It's like, I'm feeling it. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, that's always the goal. And, and I, I was just really excited about this song. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm hoping that the song will be on your next project, which mm. we don't have an idea of when we're going to get an album or, you know, something like that, but soon maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the next couple of months are going to be really, really interesting, I think. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to try and get in the studio as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe it'll be like another, another single, then another single, and, and then maybe I'll do a whole new album. I don't really know. Um, I know that I want to make an album, though. I'm not, I'm not going to make another EP. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm ex I, I, it's been interesting to see your career evolve from what you've done as a child to now as as an adult with your fashion and music and acting and and do you take a look at your career and say I've accomplished a lot do you do you take a time to appreciate what you've accomplished so far um you know it's weird I think what COVID did is it made me realize that like the accomplishments are not necessarily the the work achievements mm. Um, it's like, it's the fact that I get to do this as every day, you know, and it's like, and, and it's the fact that I can like go and spend two months in Australia with my family if I want. And, you know, like it's, it's the, the sort of, yeah, like that kind of lifestyle um, of being able to go into the studio and write music and call it my job and then like fly home and, and be with my family and be with my friends and like, um, be able to like, I don't know, spend time designing my house. And like, I, I just, it, it's that sort of like freedom that feels like um, the biggest, the, you know, the thing that makes me the most happy. So um, yeah, I just feel really, really, really lucky. Like, I don't know, I, 
I think as well for, you know, when I first got into this, I was like, whoa, this is going crazy. Yeah. This is probably going to be like a really crazy three years of my life, you know? And like, it's, I don't know. Now I feel like I've been doing it for a long enough time where I'm like, this is an, uh, a journey that's like changing and got all these twists and turns and I can't really predict where it's going. Um, and so I'm just grateful that it's like still, still going. Like I thought I was going to be like a, a little moment, you know, and, and then yeah. it was gone. And now I'm, I'm really happy because I'm still so excited and I'm still loving it all so much and still just like so thankful to the people that, you know, are listening to the music or, um, you know, just like coming to the shows and supporting me. It's like, it's a really, really, really special, um, special thing. And I'm very grateful for it. It was a pleasure talking to you, Troy. Love the song Angel Baby. It's available now and looking forward to more music from you and more projects, whatever th those projects are. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Nice Absolutely. to talk to you. Nice to talk to you too. Hopefully we talk soon when the album comes out, whenever yeah, that is. Do it. Promise. <laughs> Love it. Thanks cool, for talking thanks. to you, Troy. See ya. Bye.